This year, we tested well over 70 laptops and boy, did we discover some absolute lemons. From laptops with uncomfortable keyboards to jet engine-like fan noise to chassis so hot you could almost cook your breakfast on them. Believe me, I tried. Today, we're counting down the worst laptops of 2023. And if you're interested in buying any of the laptops that I talk about today, there are no links down below this video because I really think you shouldn't buy any of them. Instead, check out our website where you'll find the best deals on the laptops that we actually recommend. Before we get into it, yes, the laptops I'm about to talk about all have significant issues. However, everybody's use case is a little bit different. If you love the laptop, then don't feel bad about purchasing it. The most important thing is that you're happy. The MacBook Pro 14 with M3. You know why it's here, and boy does it deserve to be on this list. Apple launching a new Pro laptop in 2023 that starts at $1,600 with 8 gig of non-upgradable memory is so far beyond misleading, it is ridiculous. Plus, if that wasn't bad enough, this MacBook Pro 14 with M3 has a paltry 100 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. For professionals, neither this amount of memory nor the speed in which you can access it is enough. And to all those people out there who will comment down below trying to justify that because Apple uses unified memory, it's all fine, go buy this laptop, you deserve it. Anyway, any creator or programmer who is tricked into buying this laptop based on Apple's marketing and misinformed salespeople is just going to end up having to upgrade it sooner rather than later. But the good news is that Apple will be right there to sell you another overpriced handicapped laptop when that happens. And if you're looking at buying this for casual use, you'd be better off saving money and just buying a 2023 ZenBook 14 or even a MacBook Air. The only way that this Pro Laptop is usable as a Pro Laptop is if you upgrade the memory to 16 gig. But then you may as well just buy the M3 Pro version, as that has many other benefits and it comes with 18 gig. The Acer Swift Edge 16. This laptop has a large bright display, a comfortable keyboard, it is extremely light for a 16 inch form factor, it just seems like a great find. But then it happens. You hear the fan spin up. And then spin back down. Initially you think, this isn't too bad, I can handle this. But then it happens again, and again, and again. It just really wears on you. And yes, I tried all the performance modes and it still happened. It surprised me as this laptop uses the excellent low powered Ryzen Zen 4U processor. Unfortunately, it is just too thin for its own good, which is a shame as this laptop was just so close to being awesome. In fact, if you normally use your laptop in a loud environment, we do actually recommend this one. The Razer Blades. Yep, all of them. Razer has been on the cusp of having great laptops for years. In fact, they've made a lot of strides forward. For example, their 14 inch blade now has upgradable memory. But for some reason, they just refuse to address glaring issues with their laptops. For example, reviewers like us have been complaining about their keyboards for years. It's not my favorite keyboard for gaming. The switches could use some work. I'm not a big fan of the Razer keyboard. They're just so uncomfortable. For a laptop that costs this much from a company that literally specializes in making keyboards to have such an uncomfortable one in their laptops, it's inexcusable. But their failure to get the basics right, it just doesn't stop there. Their speakers are woeful for the price, and their insistence on using a metal chassis with extremely powerful components inside means you're basically resting the palm of your hands on a space heater while playing games. Also, our Blade 14, like Blades of the past, was the only laptop we tested in 2023 to exhibit stability issues. Playing a Netflix movie on battery caused weird screen artifacts. And when we called up Razer support, as per usual, they were clueless. They kept telling us to install Intel drivers when the Blade 14 is an AMD and Nvidia laptop. It's not an Intel laptop. Search and select the Intel graphics command Center. Uh, Intel? The Dell XPS series, oy vey. XPS laptops used to be the best Windows laptops that you could buy. Premium build, stunning displays, comfortable keyboards and powerful components inside. Many even had upgradable memory. But that was then and this is now. 
When it comes to the XPS 15 and 17 for 2023, Dell just hasn't refreshed them in the last three years. These chassis struggled to keep hot Intel processors cool when they were launched. And now with Intel's lack of innovation, Dell is essentially shoving more power hungry processors in the same chassis. So these XPS laptops feel very warm to the touch. But what makes me even angrier is that Dell insists on selling these laptops with expensive high-end components that Dell knows these laptops just can't cool. For example, Dell is charging hundreds of dollars more for an upgrade to an i9-13900H processor in their XPS 15, which due to thermal constraints won't offer any additional performance. Same goes for the upgrade to an RTX 4070, which is limited to only 40 watts. For comparison, Lenovo's Legion Slim 7i, which costs less, can feed its RTX 4070 140 watts. And things are even worse when it comes to the XPS 13 Plus. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that the XPS 13 used to be my daily driver, but that laptop was redesigned around two years ago. And yes, it looks amazing, it really does. But Dell removed the physical function row and replaced it with a touch function row. It's like Dell didn't learn from Apple's mistake when they replaced the MacBook's physical function row with a touch bar. People hated it, and four years later, Apple reversed course and removed it. Look, I understand Dell did this to allow for better cooling, but it just doesn't play out. This laptop is too tiny to cool the high performance Intel processor inside, so it ends up getting very warm to the touch and having poor battery life. Either put a low powered processor inside or make the laptop larger, but don't sacrifice something as important as the function row of the keyboard, especially as the rest of the keyboard on this laptop is actually really good. And on the battery life, it's especially bad if you buy with one of the upgraded displays, which you'll probably want to by the way, as their base one in 2023 is low resolution for a laptop at this price point. Let's now talk about the Microsoft Surface Laptop 5. This laptop was probably only in the studio for about a week, because it was just that bad. In 2023, this laptop is just insanely dated. It's the same chassis as they've had since the Surface Laptop came out six years ago. Similar to Dell's issue with the XPS, they're just shoving hotter, more power-hungry processors inside an old chassis that just wasn't designed to cool such parts. This generates a lot of heat and you feel it. It also looks dated with its large bezels, it has poor port selection, and it has a low resolution webcam. Heck, even its processor is one from 2022. Buying this laptop is akin to going to the supermarket and getting home to find the milk you bought has already expired. Oh, an honorable mention to the Surface Studio 2. On the Surface, this looks like an amazing premium device, but using it is not a fun experience. Its palm rest gets very warm, and its odd cooling design constantly blows hot air on your hands. Plus, it's really heavy for what it is, and it's just uncomfortable to hold. While I may not be holding the laptop, I am editing the very video you're watching on it right now, and it is beyond hot and uncomfortable to use. Now we're getting into some really unusable laptops. Dell's failure to understand the basics of what customers want continues with their Inspiron 16 Plus. This laptop is meant to be a mid-range one, and it's certainly priced that way starting at around $1,000. But its display is atrociously bad. It's got a washed out WVA panel, not even an IPS one, and we measured only 277 nits of brightness. Or in this case, should I say dimness? I mean, heck, we bashed the Lenovo Slim Pro 7 for costing a similar amount and having a 350 nit IPS panel. It's just completely unacceptable when you can buy laptops like the Asus ZenBook 14X with a 380 nit OLED display for much less. Plus, the laptop just looks really dated and unappealing. The Gigabyte Aero 14, what a complete mess of a laptop. It's another case of cramming way too powerful hardware in a small laptop that has no chance of cooling it. It's like taking what the XPS 13 Plus did and going even further by including dedicated graphics. It gets uncomfortably warm to the touch, even for light use, its speakers are dreadful, and its ports are annoying. The USB-C port on the left side only supports charging and not data, and the ones on the right side are the opposite. They only support data and not charging, so you can think you're charging your laptop and you're actually not. Finally, the MSI Summit E13 Flip Evo. It pains me to have this laptop on the list, as it's often a joy to use. It's very light, it feels premium, it has a comfortable keyboard, a bright crisp display, and it looks slick. But other times, using it is an outright hazard and absolutely annoying as all hell. When this laptop gets hot, it gets really hot. Even basic use, like watching a Twitch stream, 
Even though this laptop is not designed to run something like Cinebench, we ran it anyway so you can compare how hot it is versus other laptops. During this test, we measured a crazy 62 degrees Celsius on the laptop's underside, way hotter than any other laptop that we've ever tested. In fact, no other laptop breaks the recorded 58 degrees that we captured on camera, let alone the 62 we got off camera. But what makes this even worse is that it's a two-in-one, so you're meant to actually hold it. And the fans, which regularly come on, are really loud and high-pitched. Boy, do you notice them. It's like being whistled at. Furthermore, the trackpad occasionally lags and the keyboard's arrow keys are tiny and placed right up against the page up and down keys, so you end up pressing the wrong key a lot and your cursor jumps all over the place. All right, let's wrap. Most of these manufacturers seem more focused on producing laptops to be sold rather than to be used. The common denominator here is that these laptops just don't get the basics right. A laptop must be comfortable to use, which means it can't feel super hot to the touch, it shouldn't have annoying fan noise, its trackpad must be accurate, its keyboard comfortable, and its screen good enough. Either the manufacturer has crammed components inside that require too much power for the laptop to cool, or they've chosen to focus on form over function. And we're here to call them out and tell you not to buy these products. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out our website for all the laptops we've tested and wholeheartedly recommend. You'll also find the cheapest prices that we can find on them there too. Obviously, smash the like button, get subscribed, and tell your friends about the channel. Not only does it make my mother very proud, which it certainly does, but it helps us grow, which means that we can create more content for you. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.